Welcome to this week's edition of the Al and the Pussycat. Thanks tons for the feedback. It's been terrific. Some good, some bad, some ugly, but hey, that's what it's all about. It's your program, remember, and all we do is try and respond to your requests for answers to some of the difficulties that you may be having, or even just some of your opinions, and we value them. I Believe me, it's terrific. So keep that coming in, because uh, we thrive on feedback on the Owl and the Pussycat. Let's meet the panel, uh, and it's a warm welcome back to Andrea Cairns, well, a, a successful businesswoman with the Mohair store. She has a family, she has uh, two children, and... Uh, quite well known on Let's Go Shopping here at CTV. Andrea, love to have you back. No, it's um, great to be back. Yeah. Thanks for How's inviting your week me been? back. Good actually. Good. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Store been busy? It has been really busy. Kids so been behaving? They have actually, yes. Come, coming to school yes. holidays now, are you? I know. Oh, Isn't crikey. So do you dread it or love it? Oh, a bit of both. But I do love it. <laughs> good time with <laughs> them. <of> both. <laughs> Let's meet the new panellist though, is Michelle McWilliam and, uh, well, woman of the Rebuild founder interesting, but more importantly a business strategist and a mentor, a professional service award in the North Canterbury Awards and woman of influence. We expect your influence today, uh, Michelle, that's uh, for sure. Now tell me about yourself, what do you do in your spare time? I do a bit of gardening, a bit of mountain biking, play golf, learn Mandarin, um, yeah, just basic. Person of many parts, mate. Oh, multiple. Multitasking, multiple, yeah. Multitasking. Obviously a female. Guys can't do it, gotta tell you. Okay. And another new face is Nancy Ha, and she's better known as Miss B. If you've been to Twiggers, you may have seen The Great Pretenders, which is a band, which uh, Nancy's in as well. But she's uh, a mother of two, does some part-time teaching at Leaston on a farm, lives with their partner there, and a warm welcome to you, Nancy. Hello, how are you going? How busy have you been? <laughs> I'm always busy, that's like one of my things, but I'm very lucky I've got a supportive um, group of people around me and friends and family who help me. How old are your children? I've got a nearly three year old and a seven year old. All right. So I'm always looking out for babysitters and, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because you lead a busy life and you've got to do yes. something with your children, I suppose. Yes, yeah. 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 So do I'm you do always any work out on the farm? Mm, that's not my thing. <laughs> Don't like getting down and dirty? No. no. <laughs> I grew up on a farm, but I don't go near it. So. Righto. Well, let's start the program by wishing you all a very happy Easter that's coming up. Make sure it's safe. Make sure it's a lovely family time if you can possibly make it. Or just get out and enjoy it because it's really about the last break, isn't it, before we actually welcome winter into our lives, which can be a little bit depressing. So let's make the most of Easter. Plans for Easter. Let's try, Michelle. Any plans for Easter? Uh, tidy up the garden. Right. Um, Mountain biking. Actually, yes, mountain biking, and I've got some steps that I'm going to walk up with some friends because we're in training for an event in China. Oh, really? Wow. What, the Great Wall? Yes. <laughs> Are you really? Yes. Good on you. Nancy, what happened for Easter for you? Well, it's a good excuse to get the eldest one to clean her room because otherwise Easter Bunny doesn't come. So I'm looking forward to a clean <laughs> oh, bedroom. A and, yeah. <laughs> and Andrea, what's on for you? Um, a bit of work. I've got a, she, um, a girlfriend of mine who I met 15 years ago on my OE who's over from Germany and we're actually going on a bit of a girls trip because I'm a bit oh, child free for a few days. Are you so really? It's quite exciting. So where are you tripping to? We might go over to the west coast and then drive down to Queenstown. Never get tired of the west coast do you? No, it's I don't. I have to go once a year at least. I just so, love the place. Yeah. Okay. First question we get is from Joanne from Merivale and she asks this question which is quite poignant I would think and we'll start with Michelle probably with this. With Easter coming up this weekend it makes me wonder does Easter have any relevance these days. What are your thoughts Michelle? I don't think Easter has the same relevance as it used to due to the diversity in our cultures. I think it's become exceedingly um, commercialised. Um, when you can buy your Easter eggs at the warehouse in January. Um, hot cross buns in about December. Yes I and know. hot cross buns now have chocolate and everything else in them. It's exceedingly commercialised. I think it's actually time for families. Um, it's about stepping back from work and actually taking time to uh, ground yourself instead of getting on this absolute merry-go-round that people are on. Nancy, mm. why does every public holiday today seem to be commercialised? Um, I Mother's guess Day, Father's if, Day, yeah. you know, everything. If anybody can make money out of something, they will, though, won't yeah. they? You know. Does it have any relevance to you, Easter, it's, um, as, as a religious thing? Not, not as a religious thing so much for us, but it's one of those family traditions, and I think it's important to have family traditions and things that you carry on with your children as long mm. as they what still believe. Well, yeah, I'd probably agree with Nancy. Mm. Um, for the yeah, for children, for my children, it's probably the. Easter bunny hunt and finding eggs and things like that. So, so we do the egg bit, thing with, yeah, with, with kids yeah, and everything? Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. And they look hunting. forward to that. Yes, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Do they actually know why? 
my daughter does because she does Bible in schools and they've, they've talked to her and she was telling me this morning about Jesus and, and why we have Easter. So, she's so aware. that's still part of the school curriculum? Um, I think you can opt out of Bible in schools or you can, your child, yeah, it depends yeah. on the school. Yeah. Yeah. Should there be, well this leads us on of course, should there mm. be religious instruction at school? What about with your kids, uh, Adrian? Well, I don't, no, not at the school they're at, but I think it's an important thing that they should learn about, I guess, lots of different cultures and religions as well, because, well, I mean, religion is such a crucial part of, of life and history, really, as well. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Not as many believers now as there used to be, though, is there? Not as many outgoing believers, I mean, going to church and being seen at church, but there are those that hold their beliefs to themselves. Mm. And I think given that we have got the multiculturalism and there's Hindu, Buddhism, um, and the all Chinese the things yeah, yeah. yeah. So you've got to be aware that one shoe does not fit all mm -hmm. and that we've got to actually be inclusive. Can I take you back to school days? Um, mm. Was it part of the curriculum when you guys were at school? I yeah. don't think we, it was at my yeah, school. We did. I went to Limwood Avenue and then the Salvation Army would come down and give us um, uh, scriptures for an hour. Um, and once a week or what? Once a week. Yeah. Um, and that was the way, and that was, yeah, that worked really well. Mm. Um, everybody got a slice, I won't call it a dose, but a slice of um, <laughs> scripture. And it was not, um, it was quite general. So yeah. yeah. For my children, I, I like the idea of them making up their own minds, but having the, the knowledge and understanding what's out there. And if they want to choose, you know, to follow a religion, it's their choice. I yeah. thought you were going to say something really important there, that they make their own Easter gifts. <laughs> <laughs> um, that would be yeah. nice. At school, they quite often come back, you know, come home with their wee little, you know, Easter mm. baskets and yeah. things like that. So it gives them Can I tell you a terrible to... situation that had to be as a five-year-old, as it's at Andrews College, we used to go to chapel every day, um, and it became very much part of our life. And on the Thursday before Easter, um, the head male rector, as they called them in those days, asked, well, what did Easter mean? So, of course, being a forward boy at five years of age, I put my hand up and said, play and eat Easter eggs. Well, I got severely reprimanded <laughs> for that, I can tell you, but that was sort of my belief. So uh, Easter still has a part, um, but I just think if we could have the kids more input into it themselves rather than having to commercially shop, I think that's mm. uh, just... Yeah, I don't like the whole shopping side. Yeah. Did anyone make hot cross buns? I've never had actually. Sure. No. no. And I buy the chocolate ones as well. I buy the chocolate <laughs> ones. Yeah. I know. I know. And I, I, know. I, and I eat them throughout the year, not just on the yeah. Friday. Yeah. How early do you buy into it? How early do you buy them? Oh, as soon as they're out, chocolate. Yeah, chocolate. I must say that. I did that as well. <laughs> right, we'll take okay, a break. Okay, you we'll guys. With part two here of uh, the Elder Pussy Cap for this week. Chris Lynch, join me every Monday at 8.30 on CDV as we discuss the issues affecting you, your family and everything to do with Canterbury. That's CDV 8.30 right here. Computer not working? Replace or repair? DIY or get a technician? Looking for parts? Thinking of upgrading? Need accessories? You've got questions, we've got answers. Global PC. The preparation. The devotion. The fearlessness. The intensity. Runway model management. First impressions are everything. Sinclair and the team at Gone Fishing as they bring you great stories, fishing tips and beautiful scenery. Gone Fishing, Friday night at 8.30 
right here on CTV. Welcome back. Let's hit the mail straight away because uh, Claire from Ashburton writes, I'm a woman in my late 30s and have a job interview coming up for a position I really want, okay? I know my stuff but feel very uncomfortable dressing up and wearing makeup and hey guys, uh, don't have to go to these lengths, do I really? I know it should look better and everything else but it should matter. But at the end of the day, what will my chances of getting the job be greater if I wear makeup? Who wants to have a crack? All right, first of all, I would say it depends on what job she's going for because I worked during the day as a preschool teacher and I don't think it matters if I wear makeup at all, the children aren't going to mind. If you were going for a job as a farmer or anything, you know, where you're not in the public eye, that shouldn't matter. If it makes her feel better during the interview, makes her feel more comfortable and confident, then that, you know, would but be a reason to But she doesn't like wearing makeup, does she? Well then, um, I would say in that case, yeah, it depends on what job she's going for. If she's in the public eye, like I used to be a hairdresser and my boss wanted me to wear, wear makeup, so that was important to him, so obviously going to the Wasn't interview. Wasn't it important for yeah. Job. Yes, mm -hmm. and yeah. in sales, I was asked to wear makeup. And I guess as long know. as people need, you need to be comfortable. I guess going along to a job interview as well. Like if you had when you got your makeup all done and wore something you wouldn't normally wear, you're not going to come across as as, as natural and things. But you still need to make that effort to show that you do maybe really mm. want the job. So, I mean, there's options you can go along to. Like I think there's you know dress for success, and they can help you you know do with you know makeup and clothes and things like that. Um, but the same thing, even with guys, go for a job interview. They might not be, they might wear a suit, but they might not wear a suit or their day to day thing. But it's, it's a little bit of effort. But they'll I have think. a shave. You know, I mean, they yeah, don't yeah, have to be here. Or... It comes down to the reality of what is the expectation of the employer. Now, mm. if I'm going, if you're going for a in job interview, I would expect you to make an effort. Mm. I don't expect you to, you come as you are comfortable with and make up as part of presentation. If you're meeting someone for the first time, 57% uh, is. Um, first contact, how do you look, what do you look like? So if your hair's not clean with women and your makeup is not, it's got to be appropriate for you, so there's mm. no point in going looking like mutton dressed up as lamb. Mm. Mm. Um, but you've got to be confident and comfortable that you can continue to wear it as well. And she he, obviously, from the email, has not been in the workforce for a while and this is overcoming a fear, so she could be using it as a barrier. Mm. Yeah, the one thing I did like about it, Michelle, was she's backing herself. Mm. Yeah. She says, yeah. I've got the qualification to get this job to hell mm. with how I look, but you're a business mentor. Yeah, yeah, and I would say you dress for what you want. You dress for success. If you want this job, then you dress and make yourself immaculately groomed that you are comfortable with, so mm. you can go in there and say, Hello, my name is. And always remember to shake someone's hand as well at the mm -hmm. same time. And look them in the eye. Look them Absolutely. in the eye. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Even just a bit of mascara. Yeah. You know? yeah. It doesn't, as I say, you don't yeah. have to go down to the farmers and mm. sit at the and get your face made up <laughs> because you're not comfortable with that. Mm. But use makeup that's appropriate to your age and you'll look yeah. and skin. Claire, I think the panel is saying if you are prepared to make an effort it certainly would help you enhance your chances so okay. Right, we took to the streets and it's certainly just filled the press, it's gone viral, it's gone national. The question was what do you think about the St Bede's rowing situation? This is what the people thought. I think that it shouldn't have been handled the way that it was, maybe kept inside the school. They signed a code of conduct, they should have behaved themselves, they broke the law. If you've signed a code of conduct then you should stick by that and if you break it then it's tough, you should, uh, you should be punished in a way. Yeah I can see it's a, a problem but uh, I think it's, you know, the parents that complain to the school that their children can't go to the rowing club. And I, I think that's ridiculous because the school uh, abandoned them from the rowing club for a reason. So I think it's totally fair that the school says you can go to the rowing club for breaking their rules. Well, it's very sad, but I'm really surprised that such relatively old children, to call them, <laughs> would be so naughty. <laughs> you know, it's the sort of thing you'd expect a 10-year-old to do, maybe, and you think, oh, yeah, OK, he's just being a little boy. But uh, I'm surprised they would do that when they know it's strictly off-limits and all the worry about terrorism and so on. So, yeah, it's disappointing. The school set the rules, so they should be followed. I don't think the parents should have stepped in. I think it, you know, this, like I said, the school set the rules and I think it should probably stay that way. Um, yeah, it just doesn't set a, a good example for anyone. 
Well, a great range of ages there, but a unanimous opinion. They are backing the rector of St Bede's College, Justin Boyle. Let's go, guys. What's your thoughts? Betsy. Well... You've got kids. <laughs> buy into it. I would love for my children to learn from their actions. You know, there's consequences mm. for things. And what what is it telling those children that they can just do what they like and get away with it? Absolutely. They need to learn to follow rules. Yeah. And so where does it start and stop? I mean... You, well, you've got to follow the rules, but I actually don't think these parents have actually looked at the long-term um, prospects of their children. OK, they didn't make the rowing thing, whatever that is, but as an employer, um, in, say, three or four years and they have a job application, HR, please look into these people. Mm. Uh, hello. Oops. Yeah, mum and dad follow in if it doesn't go their way. Mm. Draw a line through it. Draw a line through it. Right. So no, it's, it's, not a, yeah, it's just not a good example. I mean, I talked about mm. it with, um, with Isabella, who's 10, um, because what is it teaching your children? Mm. That if There's they can do something wrong and then go and mm. get... You know, get the and lawyer on the case, look at the and they get off it. These children have got now as so well, it will and, they, them. and it's actually they shouldn't have done that because now it's become worse for them yeah. in the long run. You're saying it will follow? Oh, it follow them, mm. yeah. Yeah. I think. I do. think so. It would have been better if they just yeah. let yeah. it happen. I mean, and, you, know. you can take all the. Um, if you look back in in history, when the mas misdemeanors gone public, mm -hmm. Monica Lewinsky. Okay, he's not. <laughs> these kids aren't Monica Lewinsky, <laughs> mm. but. How hard did she find it to get a job? Mm. And given the situations for employment for youth today, the only job op options they could have is going and working in mum and dad's business. What about the ramifications of the romp uh, after work in an insurance company oh. in Christchurch? She's gone back to England and he's mm. left his job. Probably Pardon? left home as well, I would think. Mm. Yeah. Well, uh, yes. We don't know oh. that. But uh, yeah, I mean, yes. somewhere there has to be some guidelines, doesn't it, in life? Yeah, yeah. Mm. absolutely. There's rules and boundaries. Mm -hmm. And they've decided to cross them. That's yeah. it. But an awful lot of money spent in getting that injunction. I know, uh, what was it, like $20,000 $20 or something? Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, you know, Lawyers <laughs> win, as usual. No. <laughs> what does it teach the kids? That's well, the that's, thing. Yeah. Entitlement. Yeah. I'm above mm. the law. Mm -hmm. right. If there's an issue, hey, mum and dad will sort it out, or I'm under 18, don't worry about it. Mm. That's why we have... There's no consequences in our education system now. St Bede's put their hand up and said, you broke the rules, you broke our code of, code of conduct, here is the consequences. And full marks to St Bede's for actually standing up there and laying the law down. Right. Mm. So I wonder, the other thing would be interesting is I wonder how they're viewed by their fellow pupils. Well, that's mm. the other thing as well, because you do need to keep those standards. So the other students think, well, actually, no, I do need to obey the code of conduct. So in agreement, we're backing the rector. Yep. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. let's go to the break. We'll be back yet again with more from the mail. When you need to know what's happening in your region of Canterbury, join me, Chris Lynch, for CTV News First at Five, weeknights from five, right here on your local channel, CTV. Computer not working? Replace or repair? DIY or get a technician? Looking for parts? Thinking of upgrading? Need accessories? You've got questions, we've got answers. Global PC. Runway model management. First impressions are everything.
Join Graham Sinclair and the team at Gone Fishing as they bring you great stories, fishing tips and beautiful scenery. Gone Fishing, Friday night at 8.30, right here on CTV. Right, a great question from Judith from Apawa. I'm going to Fiji for the school holidays, that's great. And I've just tried on my bikini. <clears throat> I need some waxing, but I'm terrified it will hurt. Advice, please, <laughs> from the Pussycats. OK, uh, let's throw it open. And can I just say, it is not just female either. I'm amazed at that. You're a mountain biker, I know that, Michelle, but the number of triathletes and, and everyone else who now go through this waxing process, males I'm talking about. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yes. But, OK, what do we say to Judith? Does it hurt or not? I don't know. Let's go. I would say it really hurts. It does it? Okay, <laughs> right. Go get waxed, be brave. <laughs> be brave, yeah. <laughs> sure. No pain, no gain. Is that right? I would say shave, because sometimes it bleeds and rashes and I don't know. What, with the wax? Yeah, if you've done it a few times, it's better and you sort of get used to it and your skin's a bit, bit better, but she could be allergic or imagine that. It depends that. on I'm actually what the... I'm feeling a bit faint, I've got a faint. It depends on the waxing compound they use. Mm. Oh, and it's getting technical now. Yeah, we're yeah. There's different types, are there? Oh, there's different types of yeah. waxing compounds. And how I know this, and I will clear it for the viewers, is that <laughs> I have worked with a beauty therapist, so there is actually quite a science in behind it. It's not going down to... Um, the local um, supplier and saying, I'll oh, take the budget. Oh, you, know, you, <laughs> well, can, you can do it at home, can, I assume. Yeah, if she yeah, doesn't my, want to go. Okay, my advice is that don't go and do a DIY from the supermarket. No. Mm. Go and spend the money and go to a decent beautician or, or mm. ring around friends or put a thing on Facebook saying, do you know I'm yeah, a, a nice, friendly Because the first time I tried beautician. to do it myself, it was like, I couldn't pull it off. I just couldn't do it. Really? Because it's, no. So, yeah, you best to get it done. I have trouble with yeah. a lesterplast trying to take that yeah. off. Yeah, yeah. Somebody else does it. Go to a nice salon. Was it expensive? And be no, no. Um, can be. Depends well, on what you Depends what you... I think it's oh, actually, I think every it, bit, a bit I, more expensive than the other. The well, biggest like, you know, half an egg and then a full egg. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah. Then so, you get your fat done, obviously for a male. Yeah. Not, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think the the rate depending around, in round town I think is between 60 to $75 depending where it is. Well, I must have, when I opened this letter and, uh, and I looked at it, I said to the landlady, what do you think about that? She said, I'd never trust one that didn't wear glasses. So <laughs> I think she would be light-hearted, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, or a Monday morning job or something, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yes, yeah. but, but is it, you know, not being too involved in this thing at all, but you know, is it a regular basis you've got to go on? Is it, can it add up in a year? How much you actually spend? Six to eight weeks, isn't Sorry? it? So between six and eight weeks, depends on how fast your hair grows. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is. See, six I've, I've been waxing my legs for years and years and do years. Do they stop growing? Mm, yeah, they, they, well, they, 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 they do. Get they get finer. They get finer. Yeah, yeah. 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 But it's quite an outlay, I presume, if you're going to a professional on a reasonably regular okay. basis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, 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 is, it is a six to week, um, six to eight week return because you actually, the um, business actually factors in how long you're going to be a repeat customer. So uh, you're not a one-off buy. Yeah. And then in between that, you <laughs> I get... I love the business side of it. <laughs> <laughs> and then they subtly work in the upsell, so you could get your um, eyebrows done. Um, <laughs> <laughs> seriously, it's... Yeah. But, yeah. So there's good money to be invested in it. Right. So is it a bit like a gym membership? They make sure that you keep up with this? Oh, definitely. Yeah, mm. yeah. And yeah. In, when you're having your conversations with them, they'll be taught finding out what event you've got coming up. So, you know, you've got the trip to Fiji or you might be going out to uh, a function where you're going to wear a skirt without... Um, you know, stockings, so you're yeah. going to have to have your legs spray or a tanned. Or as uh, we've heard from uh, <laughs> Judith, so uh, there we are. This, uh, yeah, it's, it's quite trip. complex. It's quite, oh, you know, you girls really go through a lot, really, don't you? But, oh, but it is we important. Do. Guys are doing it now, aren't they? Oh, um, yes. Athletes are. Well, no, there's Manscaped in town, yeah. and I mean, they do personal grooming. Do they really? Have you not been? No. No. I think we should organise it, yeah. shouldn't we, ladies? <laughs> which brings up this other question, which really does, I find, quite offensive, but I'm going to mention it anyway. Facial hair on women. I'm sorry, why does someone not tell them, for God's sake, deal to it? Um, um, they haven't got a good friend. Yeah. Uh, they don't have a good friend. Well, these people have got daughters, for God's sake. You know, grown-up daughters. Wouldn't they think, Mum, go and, you know, fix Well, there yourself. might be complex issues there. What? Mother-daughter relationships. Well, get over it. I mean, yeah. Well, no, they're complex, mate. Oh. 
Nothing worse than kissing them, I can tell you. Uh, <laughs> there we are. <laughs> All right, so we've got that sort of Judith. You go and do it. Don't do it yourself. Uh, pay somebody to do it, um, and then you'll be hooked into a scheme for life, probably. So uh, there we are. Okay. Is it wrong? This is from Sue from Parklands. Is it wrong to expect my husband to do the manly chores around the house? I do everything else around the house, but I don't want to deal with the rubbish, etc. We fight about it all the time. Good God. Please help. Um, Sue. Yeah, what a lifestyle. Never mind, okay, is it worth scrapping all the time over it, for goodness sake? No, no. everyone's got to pull, the, pull their weight. So yeah. if she's doing the job she wants to do, hopefully he's doing some jobs mm. that he wants to do. And yeah, but if, you, if, you, if your relationship's going to scrap, I mean, do you scrap over who takes the rubbish out? Perhaps she could ask him, what jobs do you want to do? Because I'm doing everything. Is there something yeah. you can help with? In like the we do with children. Yeah. 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 yeah, he could Take choose. Take a lap. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. Could you imagine a household where they fight about it all the time? Mm. It's a bit bitter, isn't it? <laughs> well, I mean, well, there's there's all life, isn't it? There is like, no, like, so. I mean, stuff like that. If there's that kind of issues going on and she's um, doing everything around the house, get a cleaner. Mm. Then she's got more free and charge time. Him. Yeah, and put it yeah, on Yeah, that would be Take that it out of yeah. Yeah. yeah, join housekeeping. Take yeah. it out of joint housekeeping. Now, wouldn't it be lovely to eavesdrop on that conversation where she said, um, and this is Sue, says to hubby, listen, I've thought about the rubbish. Now. Forget all about it. Don't worry about it. You'll be paying someone to come and do it. <laughs> what well, if they fight then? There's saying, right, I'm going to go pay someone, and then chances are... No, he's got to pay for it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But then he'll do it. Yeah, so. uh, mm. I reckon it, it would work, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. we'll say it's that or clean the toilet. I mean, oh, no, that's no, that's a no go. Honestly, <laughs> I mean, that, I'm sorry. I mean, that's just not not on. Yeah, by well, the time you glove up and everything, no, it's not me. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I'd sooner get a person in, I think, to do that. That's fine. Are you good at doing your chores around the house? Uh, yes, I am. Okay. Yeah, I am. Not bad. Uh, although, which raises another thing: those bloody recycling bins in the in the kitchen. I get it wrong every time. Where does the empty milk bottle go versus where does the vegetables go? Um, and we do have, we don't fight all the time about it, but I do that's get growled at. Actually, yeah. that's a good point. If he wants to get out of a job, the best thing to do is to do a bad job of it, because <laughs> I've done that before. I've done my partner's washing and wrecked it, and I'm not allowed to do his washing, and it's great. What a great wow. idea. So he just does he do yours, yes. No. No, because he'd, he'd but I, I, I've, it. Yeah, I've just got to think of the other ways to, you know, start doing things wrong and do a bad job of the dishes, and then he'll have to do the dishes. <laughs> You can sit back and relax. Yeah, so exactly. it's all psychology really, Michelle, isn't it? Oh. It's how you actually work the yeah, system. Yeah, how yeah. you work the system and like, you know, with your issues with composting, have a compost bin, oh, take it outside. Anyways. No, flowers. Oh, hey, no, 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 you go and put it outside, mate. Compost. Well, I wouldn't compost inside. <laughs> well, don't know, some people do. Oh, it's just these bins <laughs> under the sink and it, it causes so much grief every week for just me. Just put it all in mm. there. Put it all in one. Just take throw a photo of what bin. goes in and <laughs> laminate it, stick it on the top. Oh, for God, eh? We'll make yeah, but, yeah. You know, ten years ago we didn't do recycling. No, we put it all in the bag, didn't we? We put it all yeah. in the bag and yeah. put the bag outside, Correct. put the yeah. bag out the night before what the cats put it. I bet if you leave it on the bench, eventually <laughs> it'll make its way in the right place. No, no, it goes in the bin. That's not the problem. I'm very good at doing that. Oh. But I don't mix it up enough, apparently, and get the numbers right or the whatever. Yeah. It's Do you live with a perfectionist? Sorry? Do you live with a perfectionist? Oh, she is. She's just gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> on that happy note, we'll be back next week with another Alan the Pussycat. Enjoy Easter and uh, try and battle your way through the school holidays. We'll talk about that next week on the Alan the Pussycat. Thanks, guys. Great to have your company. Cheers, bye. Thank you. <laughs>